In October 2005, Lawrence Ricci, a Genovese mobster and alleged acting captain in the family, disappeared in the middle of his waterfront corruption trial. His lawyer and family were concerned for his well-being, and rightly so. Several weeks after his disappearance, Lawrence Ricci's decomposing body was found in the trunk of a car in New Jersey. So why was the Genovese mobster murdered? And who ordered the hit? Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the mysterious murder of Genovese mobster Lawrence Ricci. As an associate of the Genovese family in the 1970s, Lawrence Ricci hung around the crew of the feared New Jersey mobster Tino Fumara. In the mid to late 1970s, Lawrence Larry Ricci got caught up in the massive Project Alpha investigation. In 1974, police officer Bob Delaney spent three years undercover for Project Alpha, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Genovese mobsters Tino Fumara, Lawrence Larry Ricci, John DiGilio, and Michael Coppola, as well as mobsters from the Gambino and Bruno families. Delaney writes in his excellent book Covert about how Tino Fumara's group operated with the waterfront unions. Delaney talks of Larry Ricci at the time. We learned that one group of dot workers had an unusual dental plan payment consisting of paying Larry Ricci $15 in cash when he came around every two weeks. Ricci bragged that he was an ILA officer with local number 17 in Manhattan and also earned $45,000 running a shipping operation Premi Lines for Tino at Port Newark, explaining that he just watched TV, put his feet on his desk or slept on the job. Anyway, one poor dock worker needed to get some dental work done for his little boy and wanted to know more about the plan he'd been paying his hard-earned money into. His supervisor asked him to ask Larry. The next time Ricci showed up to collect dental funds, the dock worker approached him with his question. Ricci hit the guy in the chest with the back of his hand and said in a menacing voice, The dental plan, that's designed to keep your own fucking teeth. Any more questions? Thanks to Bob Delaney's undercover work, more than 30 mobsters were arrested. And in 1979, Tino Fumara was sentenced to 25 years for racketeering and extortion. He would serve 15. Bob Delaney would go on to become an NBA referee. With Fumara in prison, and after serving some time in connection with the Project Alpha investigation, Michael Mikey Cigars Coppola would at some point be elevated to acting captain of Tino Fumara's crew. Lawrence Ricci had also been convicted alongside Fumara, but for far less time, and after his release would now serve under Mikey Cigars Coppola. And then in the early 1990s, it is believed that Lawrence Ricci was officially inducted into the Genovese crime family. In 1996, Michael Mikey Cigars Coppola went on the lam for 11 years after the FBI were closing in on him regarding the murder of John Johnny Coca-Cola Lardieri in 1977. I cover Mikey Cigar's alleged involvement in the Johnny Coca-Cola killing in a previous video that can be seen here. By this time, the powerful and feared Tino Fumara was back on the streets, having been released from prison in 1994. Fumara hit the ground running and exerted influence over the New Jersey waterfront for the Genovese family, something that had dwindled what he'd been in prison and also after the murder of Genovese mobster John DiGilio in 1988. Fumara, however, was on parole and had to keep his head down. As Scott Dietschy writes in his excellent book, Garden State Gangland, his time back on the street was relatively low-key. So low-key, in fact, that investigators started wondering how he was communicating with his old mob acquaintances. The feds knew that Tino Fumara must be running the New Jersey waterfront somehow, and a few years later managed to spot him meeting with convicted felons in the town of Spring Lake on the Jersey shore. 
This was a violation of his parole, and in 1999, Tino Fumara was sent back to prison. The Genovese family is notoriously secretive, and so confirming some bits of information can prove tricky. And so, whilst Tino Fumara was away in prison in 1999, and with Mikey Cigars Coppola still on the run, some sources indicate that Lawrence Larry Ricci became acting captain of the Fumara crew, although some may suggest that it was Stephen Beach Di Piero. In the year 2000, Lawrence Ricci would allegedly be involved in a plot with Philadelphia mobster Peter the Crumb Caprio to have the administration of the Philadelphia family murdered in a triple homicide. The plot was to have Philadelphia acting boss Joe Legambi, his underboss Stephen Mazzone, and consigliere George Borghese murdered, and then have Peter Caprio installed as the head of the family. The alleged plan fell apart because Peter Caprio was arrested on racketeering charges before anything could happen. Peter Caprio would turn government witness, and the information about this alleged plot came from himself during testimony. Further details of this can be found in one of my previous videos here. In 2003, Tino Fumara was released again from prison and moved out of New Jersey to Long Island, but allegedly relays information concerning the waterfront via Stephen Beach Di Piero. Most reports suggest that Tino Fumara resumed his position as captain, but also would later be elevated to be part of a rotating ruling panel for the Genovese family. And so, in 2005, Lawrence Larry Ricci, a long-time mob figure connected with the New Jersey waterfront and also chemical waste disposal, gets indicted on waterfront corruption charges, along with Arthur Coffey and Harold Daggett, both of whom were senior figures in the International Longshoremen's Association. Whether Ricci was an acting captain in the family at this point is up for dispute. But what we do know is that the trial started in September 2005 and just three weeks later, on Friday the 7th of October, Lawrence Ricci disappeared. On the following Tuesday, Lawrence Ricci had not been seen in court for two days. His attorney stated, I do not consider my client's absence to be a voluntary one. The trial would continue without Ricci, with some suspecting that he had gone on the run which would seem a strange move, as it was speculated that he was only facing five years. Four weeks later and the trial ended with acquittals for ILA officials Harold Daggett and Arthur Coffey, as well as an acquittal for the missing Lawrence Ricci. After the verdict came in, Ricci's lawyer said, I hope he's alive, and I hope it brings some solace to the family at least, that a jury saw some innocence here. He continued, I cannot believe he would voluntarily put his family through this kind of agony. Then, on the 30th of November, in the car park of the Huck Finn Diner on Morris Avenue in Union, New Jersey, flies were spotted gathering around the trunk of a silver Acura. The car had been parked there since the end of October, but the owner of the Huck Finn Diner thought that he knew the owner of the vehicle and so wasn't concerned by the car parked for a long period of time. When the authorities popped open the trunk that was also emitting a horrendous stench, they found the decomposing body of Lawrence Ricci. He'd been shot twice in the head and once in the back. So why was Genevieve's mobster Lawrence Ricci murdered? The popular theory is that Larry Ricci was killed because he disobeyed an order from his superiors. Prior to the trial, it is alleged that Ricci's Genovese bosses wanted him to take a guilty plea, but Ricci refused. Perhaps the idea being that if Lawrence Ricci had pled guilty, it would minimise the media coverage and any exposure the Genovese had in waterfront corruption. However, there are some sources that suggest that Lawrence Ricci was murdered for a reason unrelated to the 2005 trial. It has been speculated that Ricci was making a power play regarding his position in the New Jersey faction of the Genovese family, and that he had also been withholding large amounts of money from the family. The fact 
that the normally secretive Genevieve's family would leave Ricci's body to be discovered in the trunk of a car instead of disappearing it completely would suggest that they were sending a message of some sort. There are few who doubt that the man who got approval for Ricci's murder and ultimately ordered it was Tino Fumara. Interestingly, there are also those who speculate that the man that Fumara got to carry out the hit was none other than Michael Mikey Cigars Coppola, his former acting captain, who at the time was still on the run from the law. It is suggested that Fumara and Coppola had been in contact for a while, especially with Mikey Cigars at the time only hiding out in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Lawrence Ricci was 60 years of age at the time of his murder. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.